Welcome to the wonderful world of Circuit Python. Yay! It's time for Blinka. Yeah. Well, this week is interesting, and I, oh my goodness. Yeah. What's going on here? This I saw in a dream. Yeah. Um, well, the dream was called maybe there's a way to unify all the weirdo Linux boards out there that are hard to use. Yeah. But um, that dream didn't happen for a while. But it turns out a lady Ada needed to come along. So this is called libgpiod, and I wanted to to like pseudo interview you about this because I know what this is um, and I know what we used to have to do with Linux and I know and I know this is kind of one of those weird things that Adafruit does that like no, no one's going to talk about anywhere but then later on this is going to be the standard yeah kind of like Feather yeah ain't nobody was talking about Feather now Feather is well, kind of the didn't de facto even know standard. that they needed a Feather well I sent some they wanted know, a horseless carriage and I'm just like you want a Feather yeah I think it's a little bit like that it's like oh here, here's a here's a spec here's the thing so um, when people wanted to do some type of... Is this the interview we started? Yeah. Okay, so great. when people wanted to do something with a Raspberry Pi or like a friendly ARM Nano Pi or Banana Pi or Free Libre Linux board, um, how, how would they get sensor information and how would they get like digital signals in? Well, good luck because every ARM board had a slightly different way of doing it. The yeah, Raspberry Pi none of it was the same. I know that was a little different. Um, each one had its own different kind of bindings for how to do GPIO. Um, often they, they did have the same I squared C, but usually you do need to have GPIO along with I squared C or SPI um, to control like uh, different pins or, or agreed interrupts. And every single chip was different. Every chip had their own little helper, a little binding program. Like Raspberry Pi has RPI GPIO, and then for BeagleBone we actually wrote one. It's called like Adafruit BBIO, um, but it was different for every single board. And so there was no way, if you go to driver, you'd have to kind of go through and, and, and port it each time. It wouldn't yeah. be a ton of work, but like every board, you'd have to do all this extra and effort to and for you, every single driver. And you had to do things like, well, I'm going to write to a file called pin 16. Yeah, that's There's a file. Like, the yeah. only cross-platform way to do it was called Sisyphus, yeah. which is um, like the like ancient uh, uh, myth. You would, you would be like pushing this thing up a hill, and then you'd get run over by it. Like yeah. it was, it's not dissimilar. Um, but it would actually have a file system. It would have a, a, a fake file system item for every GPIO, and you could write and read to it. But it was, you you could only like set it high or low. It was like really slow because it went through the file system. So like you could only do maybe like a kilohertz or two um, speeds, which is it, it's just not bad. I mean like it's better than not being able to do it. But it was still much too slow to bit bang GPIO stuff. Like if you want to bit bang SPI okay. or, or talk all right. To so sensor. let's say if you want to do something faster. What, what terrible thing would you have to do? <laughs> well, the other option, which is what a lot of these um, binding programs would do, and um, I, I, I always, whenever I, I first heard about this, I thought it was just so bizarre. You'd actually open up dev mem. You'd open up the memory, and then you'd seek to the register address for the GPIO peripheral. So, for example, in a lot of ARM chips, it's like uh, 4000, like 2800 or something. It's in the 40, uh, 4000 uh, high byte range. And then you'd actually read and write from the register, sort of like um, like my metaphors. Like a lot of people who've done our, uh, AVR chips, like earlier PIC or AVR chips, you'd actually do like port B, you know, pipe equals uh, 0x01, and that would toggle a bit high. And you'd like, you know, ampersand yeah. toggle to, to set it low. You'd actually write to like port B, like all caps, or DDRD or whatever. You'd actually write to that register. So ironically, in like the Cortex chips, like you don't really do that because there's like so much stuff going on that you can't write. You can, but it's like a real pain. You usually have to use SimSys. But then what's funny is that you zip away all the way around to like ARM7, and then you're back to doing that. You just, you just basically seek to that register location, and you just write the byte, which um, is incredibly fast, right? Because you're, you're talking directly to the chip. But it's a terrible, terrible idea, and every chip is a little bit different. Everyone yeah. has, you know, and then even the... Raspberry Pi, the different chips when they went to the Pi 1, Pi 2, Pi 3, that register address moved around. And um, another thing that's kind of ironic is once in a while you get a, a, a Raspberry Pi that doesn't know what board it is because it, it got misprogrammed or something. This happened a long time ago. And it would write to the wrong location because you're, yeah. it thinks it's something else. So it's, it's kind of um, like hilarious and um, extremely fast and just a terrible, terrible idea. And again, you have to go through each board and, and okay. customize it. So you spent a bunch of time on this and Brendan helped out and now there's something better that should well, I be... Didn't, I didn't write libgp. No, 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 you didn't. But you have something that works with, and this should work with Linux kernel 4.8 and above. going forward. Yeah, so and so they, you have something, because it was announced in February, they're like, hey, there's this there's new thing, thing, new thing. Mainline. And it's in mainline. Mainline. It's called libgpiod. Libgpio, but, but and nothing then, yeah. has been released for it. What's well, a GPIO? There's a GPIO kernel interface now, so it's kind of in the middle, right? 
it's not as incredibly fast and dangerous as the DevMem prodding, and it's not as slow and clunky as Sisyphus. You use, you're using Ioctals, so they're you know fairly fast. Um, and then there's bindings. There's a, there's libgpid is actually the binding on top of this this kernel interface. And um, there's C++ and C and um, Python bindings. And I think there's also bindings for Go, Lang, uh, some other languages as well, that send these ioctals and let you, um, through the kernel, you know, you, it, it's, they're just called like GPIO chips and then you have the, the, the pin and, you, and the kernel registers what pins are available and then you can read right to them and they're a lot safer. You know, you, you hold the line so no other, that's another thing, I'm like a dev mem, you get multiple processes like writing to memory and like they don't know, like they're doing their own thing. And um, with this, you can hold the line and own it. And so other processes can't take control of it, which is nice. It kind of has a, a semaphore thing going on. And it's also fairly fast. I mean, it's not a blazingly fast. Again, it's not as fast as writing directly to memory, directly to registers. But it's, I got like 10 kilohertz, I think, or maybe 30 kilohertz. Um, no, sorry, 40 kilohertz from C and from Python, I got 10 kilohertz toggle, which is, which is not bad, right? I mean, considering you're going through the kernel, it's, it's, you know, it's totally safe and protected. Um, that's good enough for a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so for the folks yeah. who know about this, it's like, oh, this is this is going to be really interesting and possibly change the landscape for Linux boards because now you're able to write something once and you don't have to do something different for every single one. So a little shout out to Grogard, who's in the Discord, who does um, some interesting Linux stuff. But um, good work. I, I think this is going to be one of those things, much like the Feather. I was I was there when you're like, here's what Feather's going to be. I, this reminds me of that because I think well, it Well, I really want to be done with it. You know, it's like yeah. a, we wrote, you know, 120 CircuitPython libraries. For every sensor, from the HCSR04, you know, two dollar ultrasonic, all the way to the VME680 to you know the VS1053, like every chip we've we've written a driver for I squared C or SPRUR or GPIO, like character LCD. We just did a huge rewrite of all the character LCD libraries. The goal here is I do not want to keep writing like here's the version for Orange Pi and here's the version yeah. for here's Beaglebone, Beaglebone here's Raspberry Pi, here's, Pi. here's the because there's like a new Linux board like every eight minutes like it's yeah. impossible and each one has like slightly different configuration settings and there's only going to be more embedded Linux and I think Python embedded Linux is the future so having all these drivers I think will um, kind of do it, will, it can, by using Circuit Python as the base API and libgpiod is that as that pure kernel interface. Yeah. We are separating um, the hardware from w w all the weirdness that is in the device tree. Like, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to know about it. You know, I just want to say pin five is pin five and, and kernel, you take care of the rest. Yeah, I don't want to take care of that. So anyways, good work. And uh, this is an, I think this was a very nice thing that you did because a lot of people do a lot of specific work for only their dev board, only their chipset. Yeah. And I get it because they want to sell those. But we decided let's do something for everybody, and you know maybe rising tide boat thing will happen. I think it's good. And I think uh, you know hopefully, you know I'm going to do maybe the first board this weekend to add a new board. And then I'm going to do you know like Scott has has done a really good job of this like writing a porting guide. Here's how you would add your own yeah. board. Because I'm I'm not going to be there's so many I actually don't even like we learned about a new one this weekend like the Libre board. I'm like I never heard about this. Thing. Yeah. So maybe people who get these boards will be able to add circuit Python support. It's not that hard, it's only a couple of files that they just have to define, define all the pins. And then with libgpod, they don't have to do any special work beyond just defining the pins. I squared C is standard on, on kernels, SPI is standard on kernels, and UART is standard in, in kernels. So that kind of, be, you know, all together, I mean, we still have analog digital inputs and PWMs which are not standardized. libgpod doesn't talk about that, it only does digital inputs and outputs. So that's, those, those two are the ADCs and PWMs are still kind of messy, but we can get like the big four, right? Clean GPIO, I squared C, SPI, um, and UART. And that covers like 95% of, of so, use cases. Thanks for listening about this because like this will be important, we think, one day. Um, and it's interesting, there's not a lot of libgpid code out there. You know, I looked out and it was like, I mean, I, I was able to find the documentation is good enough that I was easily able to write the code, but it's actually, and there's some examples, yeah. but it's actually very, uh, it's not used yet, and it's a shame. People should use it. I think I think because everyone's got this crutch, they've got these uh, existing, you know, orange pie dot GPIO bindings. They're like, well, you know, why should I do anything else? It's like, well, no, you really, it's like pull the band-aid yeah. off. Get, get off of this because you, otherwise you will not be able to maintain and it. And for those who are just like, Getting started maybe with programming and maybe they're using Circuit Python. Good news: the Circuit Python you're learning now means you'll be able to program Linux boards. Like that, that that is yeah. that is a reality that's going to happen. So um, one little bit. Uh, this is real time feedback for you. Um, Gogart says it was a no brainer setup. Didn't have to set up all the pins. It just found them from the DTS. 
Live Jeep Yeah, I mean, it's it's it is a high class. Well, that that's not my part. That's the guy. That's the part that the colonel did. I think. Probably. Yeah, but either way, it was easy to set up. It was Live Jeep is, is easy to set up, and I think adding Circuit Python support is going to be very easy. You don't too. hear anyone say something's easy with Linux. No, I'm just celebrating that. That's a, that's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> <Verboten. laughs> Uh, okay. All right, anyways, so, moving along. So we think that's big news. Um, the other big news was, uh, thank you everyone in Discord, we are now at 9,000 humans. So that's 9,000 people in the community helping each other out all the time. Lots of them are watching right now or in the chat. Thank you so much. Other Python news. Um, this is from Hackspace Magazine. Sophie, who's in the chat and on Show & Tell, showed this Meow Glove. Meow Sense. This is a uh, prop wing circuit Python powered lightsaber that also um, says ho 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 Merry Christmas and stuff like that so it's a Santa themed one uh, Todd who is at Supercon got this oh that's nice to get the three Halloween. printed yeah got this Halloween Look. this is a Hackaday uh, conference I like this because this, like lo this is the logo I designed a million years ago um, that's still that's still around and well, so you got the skull teeth and everything you got, yeah, I added four skull teeth it's skull skull and skull so that was cool um, thanks for that, Todd. This is the Crunch Lab um, Lunchbox Synth, the crunch, oh, Crunchable nice. Lunchbox Synth. So this is Adafruit Lunchbox with a um, CircuitPython synth inside of it. Ooh. Um, this is a Linux board. This is that Linux board? Yeah, yeah, look this at is that. A feather. It's time to log in. Linux board. I'm excited. Yeah. That'd be so cool. This is a um, Raspberry Pi self driving car that uh, we're going to be doing a self-driving car project soon, so get ready, but this was another Python on hardware example. Our most visited uh, project site last week, thing yeah. was last week. This is the um, custom circuit Python boards for the Fennec uh, uh, sculptures with um, all sorts of, you just got to see that they're super cute. Check them on our site. This is a MicroPython project. Um, given the quality of the air in many places right now, why not make a MicroPython powered Air quality I sensor. love it's like a crystal. It's totally um, like what's it called? Looks like the futures, futures of science fiction. You're always quoting. Look with carousel. What? The carousel, carousel. What's Logan's run. Logan's run. It's like a Logan's run thing. Yeah. So. Um, it's like look at the crystal. Yeah. The crystal says, "Don't go outside. You're gonna get cancer." And then um, Moo this week we had some made with Moo stuff. Uh, yeah. Nicholas has a really cool series. And told who's running this. Um, this is one of the. This is he's making icons of these folks. This is, yeah, this is Xander um, uh, Brown who is uh, helping out with Moo, and so he celebrated Xander. Uh, there's a neat post about this young person. Oh, this is an icon doing, of Xander. Yeah, oh, that's so doing, cute. He's doing a lot of um, uh, work with Moo. I love it. This is from. Uh, let me make sure I have the right name of the labs in this. This is the. Well, there's like a circuit playground and yeah, then learning to I code make sure. with Moo. So this is from um, the e L AI lab or the, L lab. The L lab co-working uh, co in uh, Cali, Colombia, and it's sorry, Grafo Labs. Grafo Labs. And this is um, they're using Moo and circuit uh, playground. Nice. Circuit Python. Um, we have some interesting little projects with Blinka and with Neo Trellis. This is the dice rolling one that they've just. Yeah, this is he. He plays D and D, and he's like, you know what? I want to make a little dice roller. And he even made the animation. Yeah. So you can select you can um, see the number and stuff like that. How many dice, and then it's like you know six or twenty or twelve sided, whatever, yeah. and you shake it, and it will do the math for you. We had a new guide. This is the sixteen step sequencer. Yeah. We have the Stemma uh, soil sensor. They use circuit yep, python. Circuit python. This is the new um, Arduino Mega shaped thing. We're Grand calling Central. it the Grand Central, <laughs> and this is uh, our not out yet. It, don't ask. Um, we have uh, an event coming up. This is coming up this Thursday. Try Python has a Circuit Python event. Other events in the Python world. PyCon that's in Cleveland, May first to 9th. We're still asking for translation help on the messages. Join in. Circuit Python. We, we have many languages. We could always right. have more. Or if you already have a language, you know, you already speak and read the language that is um, been translated. Check it over. Sometimes there's typos or there's maybe a better or easier way to yeah. explain something. So just because we already have it, translation doesn't mean your uh, smarts and hard work are not appreciated if you want to take a review of it. This is all in our awesome circuit Python list. This is part of Adafruit Daily. Just go to adafruitdaily.com and join us in the Code Plus community circuit Python. Yay! So that's Python and hardware for the week. Blinka!